This video will demonstrate how slab reinforcement is defined in Visual Foundation and will show the difference between the optimized design approach and the specified design approach. Let's get started. In this example, we have two concrete piers that are supported by two slabs on grade. The piers are the same size and are loaded with a vertical point load of the same magnitude. Looking at the analysis results, we can view the bending in the slab in both the x direction and in the y direction. When this model was built, two separate boundaries were used to create the slabs on grade. Looking at the slab section, under the Find tool, we can see that the slab on the left is S1 and the slab on the right is S2. Using multiple slabs allows the reinforcement details and the slab thicknesses to vary in the model. Note, the concrete strength is defined under the project settings and is the same for the entire model so it cannot vary between slabs. Slab S1 is 7 inches thick with a single matte bar configuration with the top bars being in the X direction and has a bottom clear cover of 3 inches. Visual Foundation supports two different design approaches, the Optimize approach and the Specify approach. The Optimize approach lets the program search for the best reinforcement pattern while the specify approach lets you input a specific reinforcement pattern for the program to check. The optimized approach is useful when designing a new structure, and the specifier approach is useful when checking the design of an existing structure. For slab S1, we will use the optimized approach. Clicking the edit patterns allows us to choose which rebar patterns are used for the optimized approach. In the dialog box that appears, we can check the use box next to the rebar patterns that we want the program to use for the optimization. If the list does not contain a pattern that we want to use, we can simply add a pattern. Patterns are saved in a database so they are available in other Visual Foundation projects. You can always remove patterns from the database if needed. Note, if a colleague sends you a project that has a pattern not saved in your database, the pattern will appear in the project when you open it, but the in database column will say no. You can select these patterns and click Add to save them in your database. This dialog box allows you to sort the different columns by clicking the column headers. For our example, we will choose to use four different rebar patterns, number four bars and number five bars, both at 12 inches and 18 inches on center. Now based on the finite element analysis results, the program will choose the optimal rebar patterns from these four patterns for both the X direction bars and the Y direction bars. Note, had we selected a double matte bar configuration, the program would optimize both the top and bottom bars in the X and Y directions. For slab S2, all the parameters are the same as slab S1, except we have selected the specified design approach instead of the optimized design approach. For this slab, we have specified number 4 bars at 12 inches on center in both the X and Y directions. Switching to the Foundation Design tab, we can choose which design specification we want to use, and we can specify the yield strength for the reinforcement. Furthermore, in the Minimum Steel section, we can specify how we want the program to address the minimum steel ratio and the minimum steel placement. Looking over in the project status, we see that the analysis and design is complete, but there is a warning that at least one of our Unity checks has failed. For the plate checks, we see that the slab flexural steel fails. Clicking on Design Filter in the Project Manager, we can go to the slab details and switch from Bearing Unity to Steel Suggested and look at the steel in the X or Y directions. In slab S1, where the optimized design approach was used, Concrete Bendy suggests which rebar pattern should be used for each plate out of the four options that we give the slab. In slab S2, where the specified design approach was used, Concrete Bending checks to see if the rebar pattern we specified is adequate. In both slabs, the gray color elements indicate that nothing is available for design. If we turn on the flyby information, we see that the max unity is greater than 1 for MX flexure, indicating that the reinforcing patterns we gave the program for both the specify approach and the optimize approach are not adequate. Going back to the model and clicking on slab S1, we can add another pattern and we will use number 6 bars at 12 inches on center. 
Clicking on slab S2, we can increase the bar size in both the X and Y direction from number 4s to number 6s. Now switching back to the design view, we see that there are no regions where quote nothing is available, and under the project status we see that the slab flexural steel now passes. As a final note, we can change the pattern boundary from by plate to by slab to view which pattern controls the design for the optimized approach. In Visual Foundation, either the optimized approach or the specified approach can be used to define reinforcement for slabs. The optimized approach can be useful when determining rebar patterns for new structures, and the specified approach is useful when checking the design of existing structures where the reinforcement is already set. Thanks for watching and have a great day.